Hey, Butters, I found a box of some of your old crap. I think I'm gonna chuck it to make space for my new fridge. Can I see what's inside first? Secondly, fridge? For what? We already have one. Moonshine? Oh, of course. Why bother? The box is probably just full of useless junk. Just throw it out. Yeah, we'll learn to talk faster. Butters is already halfway inside the box. Eh, it just looks like some old Halloween stuff I don't use. Honestly, yeah, I'd chuck it. I don't see myself wearing male Halloween costumes ever again. Oh, thank God. You didn't find anything stupid that you would wanted to keep. What? What the hell? What is that? Wait. Wait! No! Stop throwing eggs at our house, you little f***ing f***its! I just sprayed it off with the hose! <sighs> Not even the community wants to treat this house with any respect. It doesn't deserve any. So, did you take care of it? No, they called me a heffalump and then ran off. Heffalump? Sounds like some kind of slur. What, what does it mean? Hang on a second. God damn it. Now she's gonna pull something out. And she's never going to shut up. Ah, here we go. Heffalump Halloween. I heard noises. <laughs> Were those little c**ts throwing eggs at our house again? They woke me up. And if I see them again, I will fornicate with their skulls and use their blood as lube. Seconded, I've never been more proud of you. Really? No. I got called the title of a movie. Meant for five-year-olds. Yeah. Get it over with. What is it? A movie. F a happy movie. Yep, all about Winnie the Pooh and his friends experiencing Halloween together. Like we're gonna. <laughs> yeah, kiddo. Teflon Halloween starts out with our narrator explaining that Halloween has finally come to the Hundred Acre Woods. Roo, a small kangaroo, tries his best to scare his mom Conga with a mask she'd hung up, but she notices and pretends to be scared to humor her son, and Conga... I... Uh, Hurry. Baby got back. Shut your mouth. Rue hops off, and for a brief moment, he's chased through the bushes by Harvey Weinstein. Wait, no, it's Lumpy the Elephant. How's that then? Did I do it right this time? Did I? <laughs> he's British? And you're an alcoholic with the neural strength of an apple. Yeah, but at least I drink booze and not tea. Blech. What's wrong with tea? It's basically leaf water. If you brew it correctly, you can open temporary gateways. Rue explains to Lumpy how trick-or-treating works, which, if you didn't know already, it's begging minus the home underneath an overpass. Rue then says how excited he is to finally celebrate their first Halloween together, and after the title card, they become K-pop stands and run off to Piglet's house, where they harass him like true stands would. But out pops the gang, trying to scare both of them. But it's kind of hard to be afraid of the Chinese president, a midget, a brain-damaged tiger, and a suicidal donkey. Oh, I like the last one. What's his name? That would be Eeyore. I found my favorite. <laughs> So not only do you like anime, you also like kitty cartoons. Lubot, you really have turned into a dork, haven't you? I what? No. I just like the depressed donkey. It resonates with me. <laughs> Whatever you say, dorkbot. If you call me that again, I will burn the house down while you are bathing. But wouldn't she be fine if she's in the shower? What? Because she's around water. The smoke. You idiot. She could l lay down. Spritzy, stop talking. Lumpy asks about the masks, to which Tigger explains they're wearing Halloween masks. Rabbit calls them inside and gives them trick-or-treat partners while Pooh's fat ass eyes the candy. While he's doing that, ER sees that Rabbit forgot about him, and instead of addressing it, Rabbit just ignores it. I wish I could be ignored by you idiots. How do you ignore the barrel of a gun? Closing your eyes and accepting your death. Pooh says he won't be able to make it till trick-or-treating without candy, and Rabbit tells his fat ass to relax. Tigger begins to explain to Lumpy what Halloween is, through song. It's something about the girl that just makes my head wanna twirl. Lumpy then gets so scared by static decorations and the disabled tiger holding a flashlight that he runs under the bed and refuses to come out. I thought flashlights were supposed to be confident. Spritz, I don't think you're thinking of the same thing. All you do is f with a hedge trimmer and f while flexing your fingers and f 
all over the bed sheets. What the absolute f is wrong with you? Rubeg's lumpy to come out, mostly because he's being a pussy, though to be fair, Tigger is kind of being a jackass. But in all honesty, who would listen to a six foot spaz that believes in being turned into jack o' lanterns by a monster called the Gabloon? I would. You know, that reminds me of the time AJ and I. He's pretty. Shut up, contest. Was that a Left for Dead reference? I would leave all of you for dead if I could. So they all try to pull Lumpy out from under the bed, and Pooh stumbles back into the candy. This triggers Pooh's eating disorder, and he eats all of the candy. But then everyone gets covered in sheets after the bed implodes, and they scare the shit out of each other because their short-term memory loss is so bad that they forgot they're the only people in the f***ing room. Freeman, right. Ah! 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 Lumpy realizes he's being a beta because of Rue's Sigma decision to stay with Lumpy throughout Halloween, so Lumpy decides to finally come out from under the bed, promising to be brave and learn the ways of the Sigma. Rabbit then boasts about being generous, telling Piglet to fetch one piece of candy for everybody. They all look at Rabbit, and he thinks they're surprised by him, but they're really surprised by Prime Minister Chungus covered in sugar and wrappers on the floor like a cheap whore. Who literally ruins Halloween. It seems the actions of the real Poopier and this one are one and the same. The real what? The Chinese president. He gets upset when people make a comparison of him being a look-alike to Winnie the Pooh. So? So we banned it. That's a brittle spirit. Everybody just kind of calls Pooh fat like they're middle schoolers at lunch. Rue and Lumpy then come up with an idea to hunt the gobloon and wish for candy to save Halloween. They make up a lie that they're going to go find costumes, but really they're going to hunt Osama Bin Laden. We see Rue and Lumpy form their own posse and head up to their fort. Then we get, honestly, the cutest song in any Halloween special I've ever seen. Braver than brave, stronger than strong, brave together singing our song. They don their pirate gear and get set to go on the hunt, but they stop their song short once they enter the darkness of the forest. There's a nice bright path, and then there's a dark path, which is probably filled with pedophiles and criminals, so it's literally a metaphor for the north and south side. Neat. Political commentary in Winnie the Pooh. North and South Side? What does that mean? You know how everyone in Canterlot treats everyone who lives anywhere else like trash? They don't treat me like that. They... they don't? Especially not after the Prohibition. They couldn't get no booze anywhere. So guess who sold alcohol to desperate ritzy alcoholics? That's... genius. I know how to hustle. They discuss what they'll be wishing for after they catch the gabloon. Lumpy wants cookies, but Rue wants to establish a neo-fascist dictatorship with an economical structure built around candy. <laughs> Mein Führer, Steiner, Steiner konnte nicht genügend Kräfte für einen Angriff massieren. They stumble across a cave, and while stumbling through it, Lumpy's fat ass can't put two and two together that he's bumping into rocks, so he literally gets scared by himself then proceeds to say he won't go any further, even after Rue points out that his dumb ass scared himself. But like two bumbling idiots, they slide out of the cave, and right in front of the Tree of Terror. Wonder which way we should go. go! I'm convinced Tigger carved it out himself just to scare these kids. Do you think someone would actually do that? Just to stuff to scare kids? Are you seriously asking that, or is that another one of your forgetting who your sister is moments? I don't do that. Yeah, you do. They hide in a log and assume the gabloon isn't home, which means that they can trespass without worry. Roo sneaks up to get a better look at the tree, and a crow thought it'd be really funny to pluck an acorn and drop it on Roo's head. <laughs> He's right. Also, you get to laugh at children, but I get in trouble for it. Has that ever stopped you before? It does when Lucy sticks magnets to me. Wait, that works? Yeah, she just kind of gets stuck in place rebooting over and over again. Really? Don't you dare. Rue's PTSD strikes, and thinking he's stuck behind enemy lines, he runs back to the log as fast as he can. Lumpy continues to bitch about being afraid of the whole lot of nothing happening outside, and Rue explains how on a previous Halloween, Piglet used to be a scaredy little beta. Now starting a flashback, Pooh heads over to a house and gets tackled by Tigger in a skeleton costume. Eeyore is dressed as a mummy, and Gopher is dressed as... Eeyore? When they don't recognize him, Gopher falls over and f***s up his costume. He stomps off and then trips and falls down his own hole. That's got to be like spelunking in your own. Mass. Gross. I mean, if you dig holes, you're bound to fall in them eventually. Sometimes I forget where I've placed dimensional rifts and fall into them. Where do you go when that happens? Oh, nowhere. Just a place of deafening screams and insatiable souls begging for death. Illinois? Sort of. 
they realize they need to go get Piglet. And we get another song where Piglet sings about needing to be brave. Though during the song he scares himself with his own shadows and the big garbage sculpture he built in his house. Once his friends arrive, they all group together and run off to get Rabbit. Though Pooh, trying to fulfill his desire to constantly make more poo, goes off to get more honey for his fat ass by trying to trick the bees. Though instead, he just pisses them off. Wait, so Pooh essentially wore blackface and then acted surprised when the bees got pissed? Wouldn't it be B-Face? Wouldn't it be shut the f*** up? So they all run into Rabbit's pumpkin patch, despite his very, very clear protest, and slaughter shitloads of his pumpkins. To your left! <laughs> no, no, your other left! <laughs> Tigger, completely insensitive to the murders he just committed, then vandalizes all of the survivors like a serial killer, and Rabbit basically tells them to f*** off. So, just like in the present, Tigger is being an ass, and Pooh is being, well, fat. Piglet runs off, and we come back to Roo continuing to tell the story to Lumpy, for no other reason than to remind us it's a flashback. Going back to the flashback, Piglet finds himself lost in the woods. But without much effort, he makes his way home and boards up all his windows as the first round starts. Now you're safe in the sound. Yeah! Pooh and the gang show up slamming on the door. He lets them in, and when he opens the door, there's a shitload of wind and lightning. No wonder he doesn't want to go outside, but to be honest, I'd love to be out in that kind of weather. Why? It's really hard for people to hear you crying in a storm. Piglet refuses to join them for Halloween, and they run off. And Piglet gets upset for being a little bitch. So then we cut to Pooh talking to himself, and Tigger, of course, making a voodoo doll of Piglet. You know, like friends do. Didn't Nezzy make one of you, like, a few weeks ago? Y yeah, I misplaced it, but that explains why I keep feeling sharp pains in my side. Huh? Oh yeah, that's me. We get another song that's essentially just Tigger tormenting the fake Piglet, though he claims to be trying to scare himself. But then Pooh and Eeyore show up under sheets, scaring the crap out of Tigger after that whole song. They group up and head to Piglet's once again, where he's boarding up his door. He peeks through the keyhole and sees their costumes, but somehow can't tell it's them despite Pooh's round juicy cake being so obvious. I mean, it's hard to tell who someone is when they're wearing a sheet. You would have experience with sheets, wouldn't you? Piglet heads over to Rabbit's house after not being able to find his friends despite seeing them at his own house, and somehow doesn't see Rabbit literally laying in his yard. Rabbit accidentally kicks a wagon down towards Piglet, and Piglet shits himself. <laughs> Back to the main group, Eeyore gets pegged by a tree, and they too get scared by Rabbit snoring. They run off, and Gopher shows up now dressed as Piglet, which actually tricks Pooh's single remaining brain cell. Chasing after Gopher, Pooh gets stuck in a tree, the two begin to help him, and Piglet thinks that he's being attacked by Spookables, despite the fact that it's obviously Tigger and Eeyore. Piglet then hops into his Gundam. His what? Oh, look who's suddenly interested. I uh, wasn't. Lou bought you like Gundam too. I don't. I... It's okay to have a finish. I have one. Y you You have a finish? What is it? <laughs> Don't answer that! Though, Piglet's Gundam is ill-conceived, and he collapses right into them. They roll back down the hill, right into Rabbit's pumpkin patch again, blowing up even more goddamn pumpkins. Despite that, they celebrate him scaring away the spookable, to which they all mistook each other for. Gopher pops up in yet another costume, which they praise for being better than the others. And they all get excited for how good their Hallow wasn't was. They all then go trick-or-treating, and we finally go back to Lumpy and Roo. They both balls up after the tail, and run out to set up a trap for the gabloon. Though their trap is surprising elaborate for kids to pull off. You'd be surprised. What do you mean? When I was a teenager, Phoebe and I came up with a simple yet effective trap for the mailman. It was winter, and we sprayed the driveway with the hose. And? He, and he broke his pelvis. Mom was mad. You're a terrible influence. They then wait for the gabloon to arrive back home, saying that they should be silent. We get a cheap jump scare with bats, and they just kind of cancel out the point of them waiting for the trap to work by just wandering off entirely. All we have to do now is wait till he comes home. You stay here. I'll go check it out. If it's him, I'll chase him over here. And when I get the signal, you spring the trap. On second thought, why don't you come with me? Good idea. That way I'll know when you get the signal. Huh? Then they hear a squeaking coming from a nearby bridge that they go to check out. It's coming from the bridge. Wandering out to the bridge, it begins to creak. Because as it turns out, Lumpy is too fat for the bridge. They stumble into a cart of jack-o'-lanterns and somehow pumpkins rolling around scares them. Lumpy then gets stuck cause... Let me guess. Cause he's fat? No. Cause his foot broke a board. What you just said is rude. Whatever. Roo straight up abandons Lumpy as a shadowy figure walks up behind them. He runs down the path they went to get to the gabloons, and Lumpy, despite being right behind him, runs the complete opposite direction. <coughs> Lumpy then blames Roo for leaving him alone, which is understandable, but you just saw where Roo went, you chunky dumbass. But, but maybe he just didn't see it. 
Just like you don't see things you lose that are always directly in front of you. But there's a simple procedure to fix that for both of you. Oh, what's that? Head. Out. Off. Ass. Gross cawing scares Rue, and he gets snagged by a tree branch, and somehow still doesn't understand that branches aren't evil. He screams and runs off, only for Lumpy to think that he found Rue's corpse. So he starts bullying a tree, the trap goes off because of a spontaneous lightning strike, and Lumpy's plumpy dumpy gets clapped, launching him into the tree. His what? His plumpy dumpy. I heard what she said, jackass. Then why did you ask? Gee, spritzy. I don't know. Why do I let you live? Because you don't have any bullets. Thank you, Phoebe. Lumpy then tries to escape, but apparently, their trap was so effective that not even an elephant could knock down a fucking door suspended in the air by nothing. We go to Rabbits, where Tigger is dressed as Super Tigger, Piglet is an angel, Pooh is a pot of honey, and Eeyore is just wearing a mask. Rabbit stumbles in dressed as a scarecrow with vegetables in place of the candy Mr. Chinaman ate, and Piglet says they should practice trick-or-treating there. Once they agree to it, he locks them out of the house, and Piglet, like a dementia-riddled elderly man, proceeds to forget that they even existed. <coughs> who, who, who's there? Yeah, and Spooky does it all the time. Especially when she locks the door after she gets home from work. I had to crawl through a second story window to get inside that night. Yes, but I didn't forget you were outside. I knew. I just didn't care. You locked the horse out? Yes. It was funny. You have a sense of humor? If the stars align properly. Piglet eventually opens the door and remembers it's them, then eventually throws vegetables at them. We cut back to Rue, who finds a pumpkin shaped like Lumpy on the bridge, and the only logical answer is that Lumpy f***ing died. Who and the gang end up trick-or-treating at Rabbit's house now, to which he gives them vegetables once again, and understandably so, they're disappointed at the veggie substitution. And then Rue arrives, showing them the pumpkin, Rabbit, the voice of reason, immediately panics. But shortly after, they all offer to catch the gabloon in order to wish Lumpy back, and Rabbit is surprised at Tigger for being right for a change by suggesting the idea. And they charge into the Gabloon's neighborhood like a racist mom angry at a minority due to the slightest rumor that he may or may not be holding Lumpy hostage. I've been meaning to ask, what is it with the world's hyperfixation on the outer flesh's tint? I'm sorry, what? It's truly not something to judge another being for. Looks matter not amongst the stars. Then why do you take that form? Because if I didn't, you'd all likely go insane. I highly doubt that. You should know better than to doubt anything she says. With Lumpy slamming on the door, they just assume that they caught the gabloon, instead of the obvious possibility of someone being stuck inside. I'd do the same thing if a building was burning down. It takes less energy to assume the building is haunted rather than open the door. Rue brings the jack lantern to the tree and begs the gabloon for Lumpy to be returned to him. Lumpy shouts that he's stuck inside, and just kind of gives up after being cut off by the lightning once. Lumpy charges it again, and somehow, now his fat ass breaks through the door. Yay, the elephant got reunited with his friend. Yeah, if that impact didn't immediately kill the infant kangaroo. They celebrate Lumpy being okay, and everything is right in the world, even though nothing was ever wrong. Rue begs for forgiveness, and Lumpy forgives him because he was brave and came back for him. They head to Rue's mom's house for the last bit of trick-or-treating, where they end up going inside, and it turns out she was the f***ing shadowy figure from earlier, and Kanga in a witch costume. I, uh, m mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry. Why do humans get attracted to anything if you make it sexual? I guarantee the same thing would happen if fans drew you with hips and tits. Do not give them ideas. Then these two morons realize Rue's mom actually carved the jack-o'-lantern of Lumpy. Then the group enjoys the Halloween party late into the night, enjoying each other's company, and the movie ends. That was cute. It was a great movie that made me feel good as a kid, though it's twice as long as The Great Pumpkin, so it's not as bite-sized as I'd personally prefer. It was oddly mysterious. It was entertaining. That is one thing I loved about the movie on my first viewing as a kid. The mystery grips you, and as an adult it just keeps you interested. But of course you got the cutesy art style and happy characters of Winnie the Pooh to go along with it. A journey into the Hundred Acre Woods will always keep you warm and happy. Every time. I've never been happy. You seemed pretty happy when the Michael Bay Transformers movies were coming out. You swore you would never speak of that. And you swore you would never eat my Kit Kat bars. And I caught you eating one. Bitch. I will f***ing murder you. Is that how siblings argue? Yeah, that's pretty accurate, though me and my sister were more blissfully ignorant of our stupidity. How so? Well, you, you know the game mode King of the Hill, right? It was basically that 
we'd sit on a table and pretend to meditate, and the goal was to be the only one on the table, so... You beat the shit out of each other? Mercilessly. You didn't grow up like a normal child, did you? Absolutely not, no. Me neither. 